Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Just short, I'm Anton. I'm addicted to testing since 2012. And I like to break backend services. Most of my experience comes from backend testing tools to solve the problems. That's my passion. Today, I'd like to talk about practicing and we will talk about bidirectional contract testing. It will be some kind of short demo and my main goal is for you to to try to attract you to try this and to check whether it's working for you is it worth trying at all or not so first of all just disclaimer i'm not affiliated with packed flow company so i'm presenting just my humble opinion about it and uh, that's it today i'll cover really short what is contract testing just to make common ground with us and then we will switch to bidirectional contract testing and why i'm thinking that this is really good tool for uh, current state of tools and for the future and then i'll show how you can practice this using some open source tools github docker and whatsoever so this is just a list of the tools you will need if you want to practice this on your machine. And now let's check by from, from scratch, like what is important to know first. And uh, I think the best way to understand how it works is to see these really short animations from packed flow and to get the understanding what the problem contract tests are trying to solve so as you can see we have two parts consumer and provider and uh, usually if we test something for just an understanding let's think about it consumer is our web application and provider is backend service with some rest api consumer is sending some re requests to backend and backend service is responding to this request so it looks like that i'm as a browser sending http request get users with some id and i'm receiving this response from the server and if we want to Test it in isolated way. We need to mock the provider to provide some steps with responses and to interchange it. So consumer will ask not the real provider, but some mock service that will pretend as a provider. But what is the problem? It doesn't give us confidence to release because you can provide any information in this mock and it doesn't need to be really synced with the real application that's why we are tend to use integration tests and end to end tests because they're providing much more confidence that how real things are working but how we can solve this issue we can use consumer fact you may think about it as list of interactions between consumer and provider and you save all those interactions in a file and then later on you use this file to check is it synced with actual uh, results from provider or not if everything is synced it means that our first isolated part and our second isolated part are working together and they should work the same way if we use real applications so that's actually what 
pact is trying to solve. Uh, the problem with this approach is, for example, if you are working on a project that doesn't have any tests or coverage is low, you will need to write quite a lot of tests from both sides, from consumer side and from, uh, from backend, from provider side. And it will be quite challenging to start and you, you need developers and uh, automation engineers to be involved because it's quite a lot of work. And uh, how bidirectional contract tests can help, they are just reducing amount of work because instead of checking the uh, provider part with real application, we will rely on some specification from backend that comes to be directional contract testing. Just a short demo how it works. So here it looks almost the same, but instead of running our real provider and checking is it synced with pact or not we will use our specification open api and we will check that this specification is really matching everything we get from the first part in consumer so we still need to write tests for uh, consumer, but for provider, we can just grab the specification. And uh, currently, most of the projects can get this open API slash Swagger specification just from the code, or some projects rely on these specifications to generate the code. So in some, in some projects, this swagger is generated. In other, it's just artifact that is presented inside the repo. And the only thing you need, to, you need to push this artifact to packed flow and packed flow will do the job of checking your consumer parts against this open API part. It might sound complicated, but in real life, it's uh, uh, like more or less simple. And I spent some time trying to find the project, op open source project that will allow you to practice it. So what I did, I used real world project it's a demo app some kind of medium.com clone implemented in different languages and uh, you can use it just to see how it works because packed flow provides developer license for free you can register get an account and use these projects to play around so this real world repo contains our open API specification. Let me just sh show it for you. It's saved here. So it's just YAML file that lists all interactions that should work from your backend side. I already copied the code. So what I did, I grabbed the make file from packed flow project. This make file allows me to push this open API specification to packed flow using Docker. So for the sake of demo, I changed the name of the app to MOT real world. And uh, using make file, I can now send it to packed flow and look how, how, how it works. Let's run 
make fake CI. This is just target inside make file that allows you to send your open API specification from your local machine. The same like it will work in CI. It's really useful to use this shortcut when you are developing because if you will rely only on CI system, you will have a lag between your push to the repository and some result. So I really think you should focus on getting this uh, fast feedback loop first and to play on your machine first. And then when everything is working, you can use CI for continuous integration and so on. So as you can see, computer says yes. It's a mem from Fact Flow team. I'll share later if you are interested why they call it like that. And we we basically can open up Fact Flow. This is the Fact Flow website that shows you your uh, integrations. By integration, they mean the payer consumer and provider so i pushed my provider part that's why it listed as mot real world and as you can see currently we don't have any consumer part let me check why it's not showing results i think i need to sign out let me do it again. When I'm trying to demo something, everything is working slow. It's like... <laughs> like Murphy's rule, whenever you do a demo, things work slow. <laughs> One more time. Maybe they're deploying new version of packed flow in in the time I'm making presentation. Why it's not working? So we are testers, right? We need to think what's the reason. Well, maybe it, it's afraid of me now. Okay, so we have this MOT real world provider part. It's showing me the Git branch from where I pushed this change. And this is Git commit that is used for it. Now we can we can open it and packed flow for us render this specification and you can see it looks like the same as on Swagger page. So we can check here as well how our specification should work. We see some endpoints, post request, get request. As you can see, some of them are listed as authenticated requests so just regular swagger documentation this is the first part so after pushing the provider we can actually start working from consumer part and this is more interesting i'll open another project let me first show it so another project I'm using for demo called TS Redux React, blah, blah, blah. It's a web app that basically consumes API. And as a engineer, I want to check with using packed flow that my consumer can talk to provider. So I downloaded this repo 
and uh, what we what we need to put here i created inside src services consumer two files one of them is api pack provider here i should create provider part in, in this object we will specify how we want to call our consumer how we want to call provider as i showed previously i'm using mot real world for provider so it will match consumer with provider based on the name i'm also using second specification for the pact because it's quite it's old but we don't need any extra whistles so it's okay to use it it will generate some json files that will be used as packed specification and here i'm going to write some tests and these tests will send some requests and i'll i, I should mock those requests but after executing everything i will get a list of interactions saved in packs folder so i removed the code that i had here just to gradually move let's say we want to test that getting all tags if tags exist work somehow so how it can look like let me copy the code because i'm typing slow so i'll put here the first part in the beginning of the test case we should set up interaction it looks like provider add interaction and then i'm specifying the current state and uh, which request i will use as you can see i'm using get request with path text where i'm getting this information i'm getting it from our uh, this zoom is complaining sorry i'm getting it from here that's the endpoint i want to test first because it's quite easy to start from get requests so i'm specifying a request and i need to specify what exactly response i should get and for that i need also to provide stop with tag response i'll put it let's say here so response will look like that okay this is the first part of the test case but we need some assertion right and for that i'll be using second part with provider execute test it looks like that so I am executing function that will check using my mock service mock service is a, is an object that pact provides for me i need first to specify mock service url as my default url so my request will go to this service then i'm executing this get text method and i'm checking that text that i'm receiving from mock server are the same as i specified in my tag response here so let's let's try to run it so for for the sake of demonstration, I will use also fake CI here. I will write make fake CI. 
and it will run the tests. It runs all the tests, including my packed test. And then it's publishing consumer packs. Here we are. This is the file that will be pushed to packed flow. It's stating consumer name and the list of interactions. We are just starting with one test case. So we have one interaction here with get all text. It also writes some metadata tools that were used. That's it. So what we have here, stage with publishing consumer pact is successful. And then the tricky part is, can I deploy stage? That's the stage when I'm, I'm asking my pact flow instance to compare my uh, provider part against just recently sent consumer part and check that all the responses are compatible. You can see computer is happy and it provides me URL to check the results. Let's see how it works. Now I should be able to see the connection. Yes, connection between my two applications. One is MOT real world example app and second MOT real world app. We are clicking here. Everything is green, looks good, and we can switch to contracts. So consumer contracts. We have only one test here. If we click, we will see how the expected response look like, we, what kind of headers we are sending back, and so on. From provider contract, it's basically the same. So when you are developing, you will use only this consumer contract to check that every single test that you write from consumer slash front end part is compatible against your open API specification. Let's add one more test case. So here I have a skeleton for getting current user. What is tricky here is that to get the user, you should be authenticated. That's why it will be a little bit harder. So again, let me copy paste the first part. First part, this setup will look almost the same because we need again to add interaction. We are specifying what, what kind of state we are working. And uh, the tricky part here, we need to provide cookies because the request should be authenticated. That's why I need to provide the auth token and user response steps. Let me copy them as well. I'll put them here. So this is my user stub. This is user response and this is auth token. It just the same way how real token will look like inside cookies. Okay, so we have user response. Da, da, da. Next part. Mm -hmm. I need to add the real interaction. For that, I will be using the same approach. Provider execute test. Again, I have to provide default base URL from mock service. Oh, sorry, I copied the wrong part. Not here. I need to use this one. It will look like that. Okay. Providing base URL. I'm also providing 
authorization to the request and the API is used for getting user and checking that our user is equal to user we stopped in the beginning. So let's check how it works. Save XCI. It's sending again facts. I can show you how the file looks like now. So this is our first interaction and this is the second one. Get user. So now request has authorization token. We are sending get request and we are getting body with user object. How we're supposed to do. Again, computer is happy and we can check how it looks like from fact flow perspective. Go in here to consumer contract. That's it. Get user given user has logged in. We have this request with headers and this is our response. If we made some mistake intentionally, let's say, I don't know, Let's say we forgot the URL and made it like that. If we run again, we should get the error because, yeah. Uh, user exists. I'm getting the error, but I, I don't understand what kind of error. Mo ah, mock server mismatches. Okay, that's not so interesting. Let's say I'll change the object itself instead of bio, it's biography. Okay. Biography is complaining. It's complaining because I changed the interface. Let's try it again. To two again, maximum as much as um, why it's complaining. Let's say this list that. I want to show you some error from packed flow perspective, but it's getting me just mock server mismatches. Oh, okay. I'll remove this one. Okay, I'm sending fact, but now I have extra field in user. We should have some error from fact flow. Strange. I think I'm doing something wrong. No, no, it's failed. Yeah, response body is incompatible because it has additional property address. And inside our open API specification, we don't have it. It's strange that it's showing computer says yes. Uh, never mind. Here it's showing the real status. We can switch here, click on the test, and we will get the the error that we need to fix. So something like that. You will get a lot of errors from packed flow when you start, but then eventually you will understand how it works. And if you gradually increase the coverage of packed tests from your consumer, you will be more confident deploying something 
to any environment because you can here have multiple environments. Here I set up everything for one environment called test. In real life, you can create 10 environments, test, stage, production, and these environments will be compared in their scope. And it's, it's really nice. That's basically it. If you want to ask questions, please. I would love to discuss it. Hello? Uh, I do have a question. Yes. So I know that backflow is good when you are test, like when you have interaction with external APIs and you want to test the schema for them and the open spec for that. But let's take example, let's say for my company architecture, we are not using much external APIs, but we do have a microservice architecture. So mm -hmm. though it's not external API, but the microservices communicate between each other through an API. So there were like two paths that we plan to follow. One is because it's though it's a API that they're calling, but because it's internal, we can have the schema validation and everything done at the code level of the main code. Like they, they can have a schema validation or we treat uh, every microservice as external client. And because each team works on a different microservice and use backflow to test internal microservices architecture itself, like the communication between them. So do you think backflow is a good choice if you're just having internal microservices and they talk to each other without a external microservice or external client, which is being used to talk to them? I think this is great fit for backflow because if you are developing inside your uh, inside your um, company these microservices, it means you are owner. You can get all these specification tests, and it's really a good fit because you will be able to understand before deploying that something goes wrong. This uh, step called "Can I deploy?" will show you any incompatible state between microservices. I think, yeah, it's a, a great fit. And from my perspective, you even don't need to have uh, a lot of services. I showed you an example with two services. Even with two services, it provides you some value. But if you have a bunch of them, it will be like exponential. The only trick is here, like if you only one person who are working in one microservice and you are doing your job and all others just don't pay attention and they are developing like the same, it it will not work because all of you should like commit to it. It works only if team agrees to put effort and make this uh, step very strict on CI. Because if you're having these packed tests and they are just optional, it means nobody will care about it. But if they are strict, then person who uh, make com made a comment that spoiled everything will see that I cannot deploy, I need to fix it as soon as possible. And I think in that way, it will work. Yeah, actually, it makes sense. The only challenge I think we have is for internal microservices is to justify the cost of backflow because it's not free. And the enterprise account is not very cheap. But that makes sense. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah, I understand. So my company didn't buy packed flow we're just using still it in like poc mode but uh, i suggest you to try it first because it supports five five interactions or five services i don't remember you can try yeah, five contracts yeah. yes Please. yes and uh, you can try and if you see the value in in the final way it's always regarding the cost of the value it provides to your company. If you can live without it, it's, it's totally fine. From my perspective, after integrating Pact Flow, we catch a lot of 
incompatibility issues uh, far better without any like disruption we just catch the issue we fix it we deploy not like deploy found and then fix and this is the real difference and from my humble opinion given that packed flow was sold to smart bear company they have already swagger all these open api tools after they integrate everything it will be very solid solution to keep everything consistent yeah actually you made a good point that we have to have it to a ci cd because once you make things optional people have a tendency of not using it i think that's one part we missed we didn't integrate it with the ci cd to make sure that it is getting executed and people are seeing the advantage of that thanks Anthony. it's really important from my latest experience we started developing a new project and we decided just to don't put it an attention to linters first they were optional and uh, of course people just make all kind of <laughs> incompatibility issues and after linters after like two or three months i made this linter part strict people apparently start seeing that uh, pipeline stuck because of their uh, not consistent code style first it was like shocked but then they get used to it and i think it's the only way the stricter the rule the better for anybody inside your team yeah, i agree all right so if uh, we don't have any other questions i think that's all thank you everybody for coming i thank you too yeah i hope you learned something yes we did and anthony will share this slides which will have the code repos and everything which i can refer to perfect yeah sure sure i will share and basically my demo is based on article i already published on dev2 i will share the link you can follow everything is already available if you follow the link you will get all the link, all the details i wrote an article about about it